Recently, the governance contract for Tornado Cash was hacked. This was because the attacker was able to deploy different contracts at the same address. So in this video, I'll show you how to deploy different contracts at the same address using Solidity. To simulate the DAO contract, here I have a contract called DAO, and this DAO contract has an owner. The owner will be able to approve proposals. And inside the proposal struct, it will have a target for the target contract, whether this proposal is approved or not, and whether this proposal is executed or not. So the owner would approve a proposal, and once this proposal is approved, anyone will be able to call execute on the proposal. When this function is called, it checks that the proposal is approved, and it also makes sure that this proposal has not been executed yet, updates executed to true, and then executes the proposal using delegate call, calling the function execute proposal. So what does this mean? This means that it's going to execute the code inside the proposal contract, call a function called execute proposal, but the code will execute inside this contract, so it will update any state variables inside the DAO contract. This is the DAO contract. Now let's take a look at a simple proposal contract. So here I have a proposal contract and when the function execute proposal is called, for simplicity, it will just log execute code approved by DAO. In reality, there will be more code, but for this example, we'll keep it simple and then just log execute code approved by DAO. Now recall from a previous video where I explained how the attacker was able to deploy different contracts at the same address. The attacker first deployed the proposal contract, got it approved from the DAO contract, and then deleted this proposal contract. So he might have had a function, something like emergency stop. When this function is called, it would delete this contract. Being able to self-destruct this proposal contract will become important later. Let's move on and let's write the attack contract. We're going to be writing some contracts so that we'll be able to deploy different contracts at the same address. Here's the overview of the contracts that we're going to be writing and then deploying. So we'll first create a contract called deployer deployer, which will use create2 to deploy another contract called deployer. And then this contract deployer will use create to deploy the proposal contract that you see above over here. And later we'll have the DAO approve this proposal contract. And once this proposal contract is approved, we'll delete the proposal contract and also the deployer contract. And then using the deployer deployer contract, again using create2, we'll redeploy the deployer contract. And then using create, we'll deploy the attack contract. So the contracts that we're going to be writing are deployer deployer, deployer, and the attack contract. So let's start with the deployer deployer contract. And here I'll type contract deployer deployer and let's first write a function to deploy the deployer contract so to do that we'll first declare another contract contract deployer and going back inside the deployer deployer contract we'll write a function to deploy the deployer contract below function deploy external and to deploy the deployer contract we're going to be using create2 so to deploy the deployer contract we will type new deployer and to deploy this contract using create2 what we'll have to do is put a curly braces here and then type salt and define a salt of bytes 32 so first i'll say salt and let's define a variable called salt so i'll say bytes 32 salt equals we'll use ketchak 256 to come up with a salt so I'll say ketchak 256 abi dot encode and for the salt let's use a ketchak 256 of uint 123 so this salt can be any random bytes 32 what's important is that we use the same salt every time for the deployment so that the address of the deployer contract will always be the same now let's cast this new contract into an address so say address and then we'll assign this to a address variable address addr is equal to cast it to an address deploy the deployer contract using create2 and for the demo we'll want to get the address of the deployer contract that was deployed so we'll log it using events so I'll define an event event log what we're going to log is address I'll name it addr and then over here once we deploy the deployer contract we'll emit log addr okay that completes the deployer deployer contract it has a single function called deploy which will deploy the deployer contract using create2. 
Let's move on. Let's write the deployer contract. The deployer contract will need three functions. Function to deploy the proposal, a function to deploy an attack, and a function to delete this contract. I'll name a function. Function deploy proposal external and function deploy attack external and a function to delete this contract function kill external the function to kill is the easiest one so i'll finish this off right now to delete the contract we'll have to do self destruct and then inside here we'll need to pass in an address and it has to be a payable address for this example we'll keep it simple and say payable address zero next let's write the deploy proposal contract so inside here the way to deploy a proposal contract using create is new proposal and we'll want to capture this as an address and then log it so again we'll declare event called log paste it here and then we'll cast this in as an address address assign it to a variable address addr is equal to and then we'll log this address emit log addr so that completes the function to deploy the proposal contract let's now write a function to deploy the attack contract and to do that we're going to need the attack contract so below it i'll declare a contract called contract attack and then we'll fill out the details later so to deploy the attack contract we're going to copy this code paste it here and then change the proposal to attack contract okay so that completes the deployer contract the only contract that we have left is the attack contract what i'm going to do is cut this contract and then i'm going to paste it next to the proposal contract the reason is because we'll need to have the function called execute proposal what i'm going to do is copy these two functions and then paste it inside the attack contract and let's log something else over here. So we'll say execute code not approved by DAO. So now this would mean that once the proposal contract is deployed and approved, and then we delete it, and then we redeploy the attack contract, we'll be able to execute any arbitrary code that's not actually approved by the DAO. But let's make this a little bit more interesting. If I scroll up, notice that the DAO contract has an owner, and when we execute using delegate call, this means that we have a potential to update the owner state variable inside the DAO contract. In other words, we are able to hijack the ownership of the DAO contract. To do that, what we need to do is have the same layout for the state variable as the DAO contract. So inside the attack contract, I'll declare a state variable called address owner. And going back up, notice that this state variable owner is the first state variable for the DAO contract. So that is why inside the tag contract i'm declaring the owner state variable as the first state variable what we're going to do is update the owner state variable to the address of the attacker for this demo we will be calling execute inside the dao contract and this will be called by the attacker and also it's going to be using delegate call which means inside here message.sender will be equal to the attacker so all we have to do to hijack the DAO contract is say owner is equal to message.sender. Okay, so that completes the attack contract. Next up, I'm going to show you a demo of the attack. But before we do that, I'll explain how we're going to do it. This is a step that we're going to follow for the demo. First, Alice deploys the DAO contract. Next, the attacker deploys the deployer deployer contract and then deploys the deployer contract by calling deploy on the deployer deployer contract. Once the deployer contract is deployed, we'll deploy the proposal contract. We'll get the address of the proposal contract, and then next Alice is going to approve the proposal contract that was just deployed on step three. Once Alice approves this proposal contract, the attacker will delete the proposal contract. So this is done by calling the function emergency stop, which will execute self-destruct. Once the proposal is deleted, Next, we also delete the deployer contract and then we deploy the deployer contract. So this means that when we call the function deploy attack to deploy the attack contract, the nonces are reset, the sender will be the deployer contract, so the address of the attack contract will be the same as the address of the proposal contract. Since the DAO has already approved the contract address deployed at the attack contract, the attacker will call execute 
it will do a delegate call, execute the code inside the attack contract, but the state variables that will be updated will be the state variables inside the DAO contract, and we'll be able to update the owner of the DAO to the attacker. Okay, so first we'll deploy the DAO contract. To do that, I'll first make sure that the contract compiles by hitting Control S, and the contract compiles. So let's now deploy the DAO contract. You'll say that the first account is Alice and the second account is the attacker. So Alice deploys the DAO contract. Alice deploys the DAO contract. Next, the attacker deploys the deployer deployer contract. So we'll switch over to the attacker and then the attacker deploys the deployer deployer contract. Next, the attacker will call the function deploy. So I'll scroll down, open the deployer deployer contract and then click on deploy. And we'll need to retrieve the address of the proposal contract. This will be logged inside the transaction. So I'll open my logs and then open the transaction and I'll look for the logs, looking for the log ADDR. So this is the address where the deployer contract was deployed. Okay, so let's load the deployer contract at this address. Scrolling up, I'll select the deployer contract and instead of calling the function deploy, I'll load this deployer contract at the address that we copied. So I'll click on that address, scroll down, open the deployer contract, and we will deploy the proposal contract. Click on deploy proposal. Transaction was successful. We will get the address of the proposal contract by again looking at the transactions, scroll down, looking for an address. So that is the address of the proposal contract, copy. And then let's load the proposal contract. So select proposal at the address that we just copied click at address. Okay, so that completes the setup. Next, Alice would check the code at the proposal. And since there's no malicious code, let's say that she approves this proposal contract. So going back to Alice, and then she's gonna approve the proposal contract. So paste the address of the proposal and then click approve. So this call was just called by Alice. Okay, so next, the attacker Switching back to the attacker, switching back to the attacker. The attacker will delete the proposal and the deployer contract. So scroll down, the attacker will delete the proposal contract. So this is done by calling emergency stop. Transaction is successful. So this contract is deleted, so I'll just remove it. And next, the attacker deletes the deployer contract. So I'll hit kill. Now, since this deployer contract is going to be redeployed using create2, this means that we're going to have the same address for this contract. So I'm not going to hit X, I'll just leave it here. But at this moment, this contract has been deleted. We are on step 6. Redeploy the deployer contract. To do that, go back up to the deployer deployer contract, and then click on deploy. So now, the deployer contract is redeployed, and we can Check this by clicking on the transaction and then looking for the address where the contract deployer was deployed. So that's over here. Starts with 4EE and ends with 6E5. Check the address of the deployer contract here. This was the address that was previously deployed. So it starts with 4EE, ends with 6E5. So using create2, we are able to redeploy the contract at the same address. Step 7 will be to call deploy attack. So let's call deploy attack and then get the address of the attack contract. Scrolling down, that will be the address of the attack contract. And let's now load this attack contract. Scroll up, select the attack contract, paste the address of the attack contract, and then click on add address. Scroll back down, click on the attack contract. And the next step is to call execute on the DAO. So I'll scroll up. And then we'll call execute. For this example, this DAO only has one approval. So the first approval will be indexed to. And then call execute. And the transaction was successful. So we executed a code to hijack the owner of the DAO. So let's check that the owner of the DAO is now equal to the address of the attacker. So I'll click on owner. And this is the address that we get. Starts with AB8, ends with CB2. Scrolling back up. Notice that the attacker address starts with AB8, ends with CB2. So in summary, in this video, I showed you how to deploy different contracts at the same address. And I've also showed you how to hijack this DAO contract 
using that technique.